When it comes to supermassive black holes in the center of various galaxies, there are so many new things we've learned about them in the last 10 years or so. But at the same time, we've also discovered new mysteries and new things we just cannot explain right now. And today we're going to be talking about one such mystery with a potential resolution. The mystery being, are there any other massive black holes wandering around our galaxy, specifically the ones that are left over from a long time ago? Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about the wandering black holes. Based on the study right here that you can find in the description below, that used the computer simulation, and more specifically the Romulus cosmological simulation, to try to figure out how many potential wandering black holes there are in the Milky Way galaxy, and how many we can expect around other galaxies as well. But first, let's start with the questions that are trying to be answered here. For example, based on a lot of other simulations, we sort of understand how galaxies grow and how they combine into larger and larger chunks of matter. Essentially, the galactic growth is something that's been very thoroughly simulated over the past few decades. But we also understand that even smaller galaxies, even before the collision, will usually have some sort of a central black hole. Yet today, pretty much most of the galaxies out there seem to possess only one central black hole, with some minor exceptions here and there. And we also don't generally see a lot of other black holes moving around, even massive ones. There's actually only one other study I've discussed previously that seems to have discovered what's known as a wandering black hole in one of the distant galaxies. But what happened to all of the other ones? Where are the other wandering black holes that should be present there from all of the collisions the Milky Way and other galaxies experienced? And although obviously some galactic collisions might result in the collision of black holes as well, for the most part, most black holes should not actually collide. They most likely end up escaping or being kicked out completely. With one good example being right here, the nearby Triangulum Galaxy. We know that this galaxy technically should contain a pretty massive black hole on the inside. Yet every major investigation to date established that the black hole is just not there. It's gone. It either flew away somewhere or maybe it never existed. But other studies establish that for the most part, there is a direct correlation between the mass of the central bulge that you see right here and the mass of the central black hole, meaning that the bigger the bulge, the bigger the black hole. Triangulum has a pretty big bulge, so the black hole should be there. But it looks like it also turned into a wandering black hole probably a few billion years ago. On top of this, it's not entirely clear how supermassive black holes form as well. Some of them are just way too massive to exist. Current explanations involve a massive amount of gas that's somehow absorbed pretty much almost instantly, or possibly some sort of a massive feeding event that involves the black hole, the magnetic field, and a lot of gas coming from the outskirts. But in short, nobody really knows how some black holes are able to grow so big. So there are definitely a lot more questions than answers. As of today, every major simulation suggests that a lot of the black holes do not collide. They end up getting kicked out and essentially become wandering black holes. They become their own invisible objects, very likely possessing nothing around them. And although this concept is very theoretical, it does make a lot of sense. If a smaller galaxy collides with a slightly larger galaxy, there's a very, very low chance that the black hole in the middle of the smaller galaxy is going to somehow merge with the larger one, most of the simulations to date show that the smaller black hole is just going to get slingshot out of both galaxies and end up traveling across the intergalactic space. Although it's very likely going to get stuck in the very long orbit in the halo of the galaxy itself. So it's not necessarily going to escape completely. But trying to figure out how many of these objects are out there or where they could possibly be located is of course a question we cannot answer because we cannot see them. We can, however, simulate all of this. Which is pretty much what the scientists in this paper did. They decided to calculate the potential number of wandering black holes in a typical galaxy based on the mass of the galaxy and the mass of the central bulge of the galaxy. And one of the main discoveries here is in regards to how a lot of this changed over time. So in the first two or so billion years, there were quite a lot of various supermassive black holes inside the center of the galaxy inside the galactic bulge. And a lot of these galactic bulges contained essentially multiple binaries of various supermassive black holes, many of them, not just one or two. Moreover, a lot of these supermassive binaries would create a tremendous amount of light, a tremendous amount of energy. 
As a matter of fact, they suggest that it would outshine the central black hole itself. So these early galaxies very likely produce a huge amount of light simply based on these wandering black holes moving around the central bulge of an early galaxy. Or in more astronomical terms, anything beyond the redshift of 4 would very likely possess a tremendous amount of brightness produced by these huge numbers of uh, wandering black holes. But after this, a lot of these wandering black holes would very likely end up on the outskirts and no longer produce much light, eventually disappearing completely because there's just nothing that they can absorb. And most of them will eventually end up on the outskirts or in the halo of the galaxy, where they probably are still today. And although in terms of mass they are definitely much smaller than the central black hole, some of them are still really massive, possibly reaching masses in millions of masses of the sun. But because their mass directly correlates with the mass of the original galaxy, and specifically the bulge of the galaxy, by discovering some of these black holes we might be able to discover what the original galaxy was like as well. But I guess the next few questions are, well, can we actually find some of them? Where would they be today? And how many can we expect from our own galaxy, from the Milky Way? Well, the additional simulations establish that there is a linear relationship between the total mass of the galaxy and the expected number of the wandering black holes. So for a smaller galaxy, for a typical dwarf galaxy that might have experienced only a couple of collisions, it would look something like this. For something closer to our own galaxy, it would look something like this. But some of the more massive galaxies might have up to several hundred wandering black holes around them, with some of them even traveling inside the galaxy itself. This is an example of a more massive simulated galaxy with the wandering black holes in the vicinity. But based on the mass of the Milky Way, the scientists expect that it probably has 12 different wandering black holes, most likely traveling in the farther reaches of the galaxy in the halo itself. So somewhat invisible to us, very likely extremely difficult to detect, but not completely invisible. Anytime one of these wandering black holes crosses a large chunk of matter, they will start releasing a very specific type of energy that we're used to seeing from a lot of other galaxies. Probably somewhat similar, but a lot more powerful than smaller black holes in the galaxy. But the total mass of all of these wandering black holes would not really be that great. They might have a mass of about 400,000 masses of the Sun if you were to combine all of them, simply because of the galaxies they came from. Much smaller, much less massive dwarf galaxies that eventually collided with the Milky Way. And although it might be difficult for us to actually find one nearby, it might be possible to prove this idea by finding some of these wandering black holes in some of the early galaxies. If the scientists are correct in their interpretation of the simulation, the centers of these early galaxies would be filled with various active black holes, producing a lot of very specific light. Light that should be similar but somewhat different from a typical quasar, and that should be detectable with some of the upcoming telescopes that should start exploring the universe in the next few years. But because we're talking about objects that are really, really far away and in some of the earliest parts of the universe, it might actually take a while before we find some of these galaxies and before we can identify if any of this has any merit. Because for all we know, maybe these simulations are just a little bit too simple and maybe nothing actually works that way. And so until we get some observational evidence and until scientists can definitively prove that this is exactly what happens to black holes and that wandering black holes indeed exist and travel across empty space, unfortunately we cannot definitively say that this is true. It's still just a simulation, even though it's a very solid and very realistic simulation. But until further observational evidence, or better even, until we discover one of these 12 potential wandering black holes somewhere around the Milky Way galaxy, we're not really going to know if this is a fact. Now this is probably a fact, or basically it's probably a reality, but not a definitive reality just yet. There are still way too many unanswered questions when it comes to the creation, the formation, and of course the evolution of supermassive black holes. At the moment, there is just too many unanswered questions. But in the last 10 years, scientists have been able to answer a lot of these questions and create a lot of new ideas and a lot of really interesting correct explanations. And so it's only a matter of time before we know what happens to galaxies, what happens to their black holes, and if these wandering black holes are indeed all over the place. Because chances are that our night skies might actually look something like this. There might be invisible massive black holes traveling all over the place, but because they have nothing next to them and no gas and no mass to absorb, we are unable to see them, to detect them, 
or to feel any effects from them as well. And on some unrelated note, two years ago I've actually discussed this study right here that you can find in the description that discovered an unusual break in one of the stellar streams not so far from planet Earth. A break that might have been caused by something extremely massive and somewhat invisible passing through the region. Back then it was implied that this could have been one of these potential wandering black holes. And so there are even signs of them moving around the galaxy not so far away from planet Earth. You can learn more about this in one of the previous videos somewhere right there. And so it's only a matter of time before we either find more evidence or possibly even find one hiding somewhere in the halo of our own galaxy. But I guess until then that's all I wanted to mention. Check out all of the relevant links in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.